Hello, welcome to Lisa Horton Crafts. My name is Claire and today I'd like to show you how I watercoloured the fabulous designs of Lisa's 3D embossing folders. So today I'll be using the layered petals embossing folder. Also you'll be able to use this technique using any watercolour medium you have in your craft collection including the watercolour palette introduced to us by Lisa. Because we'll be using watercolours, I'll be using a watercolour card or a mixed media card. So I used Lisa's nested scallop circles to cut myself a circle of watercolour card. I used the largest plain circle and I'll use the largest scallop circle later on to mat and layer for my finished project. I then ran the circle through the embossing machine with the folder. So I have this fabulous embossed piece of watercolour card and working onto my messy mat here I'm actually going to just apply some of the ink straight from the pad to my mat so I can pick up directly with a water brush. I'm using Lisa's water brushes. You'll see that I'm picking up the watercolour with the watercolour brush I don't have too much water flowing through the nib at this stage because I want to have control of the paint onto the watercolour card here. So at this stage I'm just laying down the base colour onto the watercolour card and I'm covering the entire flower with this palest of colours. Now what I would do I would work through this entire piece and I would lay down the palest of colours all over the card. So I would work away and colour all of the flowers in pink there. Now at this stage I also want to add the basic colour onto the twigs of these flowers so I'm just going to bring in some brown distress ink for gathered twigs. I just put a little base down onto my mat here. I should need to pick up a little bit more water through the nib with the watercolour brush and pick up a tiniest amount of the brown. Now the more water that you add to the colours, the distress inks, the paler they are going to appear onto the paper. We mix that colour with as much water as we can and we start laying down that colour and you'll see that that applies a really pale base colour onto our watercolour card. Now, it's important when you watercolour in like this to actually work in layers and as I said, we are working initially on the very palest of the colours and I would suggest working through this first stage, laying down the basis of all the colours. So I've worked with a pink, I've worked with a brown. I will add some of the palest of green onto the leaves. Now I'm using um, Distress Ink Mode Lawn. So I put a tiny bit of the green ink onto my mat there. Just prime the brush with some more water to come through it. Now to clean off your nib, your watercolour brush nib, all you need to do is take yourself either a spare piece of um, paper towel or a microfiber cloth which I always have beside me and just brush the nib onto that and you'll see that that nib does actually clean itself so that means you'll be able to use the same brush throughout the same project. So we just prime the, prime the nib again so we get some clean water coming through and we pick up the tiniest amounts of the green there. Now, as I say, the more water that you add, the paler the colours that will appear onto the page. So we can just go in and we can just add the base colour now onto our leaves. Now, what you would do you would work your way through this entire layer and you allow all of that to dry. 
Now I'll bring in the layer that I've already prepped. So the trick when adding watercolour detail and adding the darker colours is to actually work onto a dried background. So that's why it was important to lay down the, the foundation colours and allow them to dry fully before we start coming in with darker colours to add the detail. So I shall come in next with a darker pink. Again, same method, I shall put the ink onto my mat and pick up directly with my brush. So, we allow some water to come through the nib. Not so much this time because we want to have the ink lay down some more darker detail. We don't want to have as much water coming through our nib. So we pick up the, the dark ink and this time we start back onto the flowers and we start adding the detail. Now hopefully you can see that that pink ink that I'm laying down this time is actually creating some darker features on those flowers. So we continue picking up the ink and working. Now this at this stage, because we do want to add detail and we start want to start adding some character to the flowers, you'll see that I'm working from the base of the flower and flicking my nip upwards towards the top edge of the petal. This means that you'll still see a lot of the paler ink that I that we laid down first, and we can start adding some shading and bring in these flowers to life. So I'll pick up the, the ink from my mat and we start working from the base of the flower upwards and you can start seeing that the flowers take on different shades. Now the beauty of the embossing folders also is because we do have a raised image here, Lisa has added the detail so we, we know where the light and shade of the flower would fall. And just by running your brush over the embossed detail here, the ink will naturally settle into the recessed areas of the design. When the ink runs out on your palette, just add some more so we have plenty to work with. We can continue working our way around. Again, our brush at this stage isn't as wet as it was in the first layer. But what we do want to do is just continue working on this layer on all of the flowers and allowing these details to dry before we come in with a darker colour again to add some more shade. We can repeat this process and add some detail into the leaves. Again, I'm coming in with the same green as I used before. So we have the mowed lawn. And because I won't use as much water coming through my water brush, the green layers I add on top of the leaves now will actually stand out and appear darker than the initial lay that we that we could see in the first round and you can start seeing now that just by adding some shade not to all of the leaves because obviously we want to keep those that lighter shade of green still coming through we can start seeing that dimension comes to the leaves as well Again, I'm working from the base of the leaf and upwards to create some dimension. Now, because of the properties of the Distress inks, it does mean that you can go back onto areas that you may have added a little bit too much ink and just blend those out so we don't have too many harsh lines just by using the properties of the water brush and the 
affinity that the Distress Ink has with water. So again, I've already prepped the next layer. And you can see now that we do have a lot of shading coming into the flowers. And this will allow us to come in with the darkest layer of pink to create those final details in those flowers. So the Distress Ink I'm using this time is Picked Raspberry, which would be the darkest of the pink inks. Again, I shall prep the water brush and have some water come through the nib there. But I'm going to dab a lot of that off and leave that reservoir of water sitting on my mat there to pick up as and when I need it. And I shall come in and pick up the smallest pink amount of ink on the nib, nib of my brush and now we can just start putting in those really fine details in flicking movements from the base of the flower upwards and this is what will add that beautiful detail onto the edge of the embossed design here. Now if you think about where the recessed areas of the design are and perhaps into the folds of the petals and you can imagine that would be where the darkest areas of the flower would be so that would be where you lay down just that little bit more ink and also the base of the flower where the petals are all collected would be slightly darker so that's where we again work from the base and flick upwards in the buds the areas tucked right inside before I, before the bud will open will be the darkest areas so we can lay down more colour there. And you can start seeing that these flowers really do take on a completely different look. And just by gradually adding these darker layers in flicking motions, I'll say probably best to add the ink slowly and at this stage you're working with an almost dry brush because that will allow you to add the really fine detail of the darker colours almost going into like the veins of the flowers and that allow the shade and the contour of the flowers to really really pop so you would continue on all of the flowers and you would then have your layer fully dried like this and you have the advantage of the 3D design giving you that dimension of the flowers but also that shading which just adds to that. Now to finish this layer off I'm going to come in with some blue ink and just add a hint of blue around each of the buds just to give the illusion of them being set against the blue sky. So I'm using a blue distressed ink, I'm using a tumble glass and I'm using a very wet nib this time. And picking up the, the blue ink, I'm just going to work gently around each of the, the buds and work that colour so that that fades into the next bud. This will serve to highlight around each of the flowers, which I think makes each of the does, um, makes all the colours pop a little bit more, and it just gives that illusion of being against a beautiful blue sky. So you would work your way all the way around, 
let's say, concentrating around each of the embossed areas where the shadow would be cast and just highlights that design beautifully. So now when this layer is dry, we can actually create this into a finished project. I hope I've given you the confidence today to have a go at watercolouring, especially your embossing folders. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so that we can keep you updated with any future videos that we may post.